Morning, morning. It's Lewis back from MK Sports Cars. You're probably thinking, this does not look like the interior of an RX-5. You're correct. This is not an RX-5. This is my trusty Toyota Corolla. And we're about to make our way up to the NEC in Birmingham for the Practical Classics Restoration Show. Cue the time lapse. As you can see, we have arrived at the NEC in Birmingham and right next to the entrance, we have the MK show stand. Now all the guys are busy talking to customers so I'm not going to intrude too much, we'll touch upon that later on. It's not a bad spot for us really, got the RX-5 Turbo taking the centre stage as well as a chassis, a higher booster engine and right in the corner, yet to be put into one of our demo cars yet, is our new Dura Power engine. Now it's going to be exciting to see how that thing goes, but from now let's take a walk around the show and see what else is here. Right, let's start over at the left side and see what it has to offer. There's plenty of show stands here today, people selling some good bits, some restoration events going on. Over here we've got some posters and some artwork for sale. But we're not here to see artwork, we're here to see cars at the end of the day. Got a little Meguiar show stand. Along with the Meguiar show stand, we've got a nice little slammed American police interceptor car. Not something you see every day, definitely. It's an interesting little show car to bring along. Looks pretty cool. Right, now we move over into the RREMC Rolls-Royce Employees Motor Club. Right, we're going to start off with a little Porsche 944. Alongside the 944, we have a little Morgan. Not something you see every day. Now look at that for an interior though. Some nice styles in there. I'm not overly sure I'd fit over on those seats, but I'd be willing to give it a go. Now everyone likes an old Volvo in their life. This is a beautiful little car. Now as far as restored classics go, there are some absolute pieces of kit around here. Old little Mitsubishi. Now look at that for an interior. This is definitely not something you see every day. A little Ford Aston Martin Tickford Capri. So we've got a little Capri lump in here, blatantly on a relatively sized turbo. As far as classics go, the bodywork on this and the interior is just absolutely astonishing. Look at those little Recaro seats in there. Now that is more looking like an interior that I'd like to sit in. What's interesting about walking around a show like this is it really does capture the sort of cars that you don't see on the road nowadays. I mean, if it was still a time where you'd see these every day on the road, I mean, let's just say this. I'd be driving my car more, put it that way. Right, we're gonna head over here to the Porsche 924 Owners Club and see what they've got on stand. I mean, I'm gonna have a guess here, I might be wrong, but there's probably gonna be some Porsche 924s. And uh, yeah, I'm correct. What a surprise. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, I am a lover of a Porsche 924, but in moderation. But as far as restored cars go, I mean, this is mint. Look at that engine bay. Right, there's a bit of a different show stand over here. The Porsche Enthusiasts Club. I mean, that, I wouldn't really say it's a classic. It's a nice car. Right, let's take a look over here. Now, this is more like it. Look at that. Now, a lot of these cars are actually for sale, I believe. Um, there's a little auction going on as we speak out the back. I mean, you really get to understand how big of a venue this is until you just take a look at all the walls around. I mean, this is just absolutely full to the brim with classic cars. And I've spotted a little Miata lurking, MX-5 Mark One. Now, this is actually a Unos Roadster, an original Unos Roadster, I believe, um, which is sort of rare to see in this condition. 
but unfortunately we don't use these as donor cars over at MK. Um, we stick with the Mark II or the Mark 2.5 purely because these Mark 1s are getting quite expensive these days. I mean, to find one of these, even in bad condition, you're looking upwards of sort of two grand, which is quite, it's on the pricey side, put it that way. Look at that, painted little rocker cover on there. Seriously cool little cars. Now this is definitely not something you see every day. An MG X Power SV. Never actually seen one of these in real life before. And this is an absolute mint condition, one of these. I mean, look at that bodywork. Unsure of the uh, little carbon fenders on the side, but the car itself is absolutely mint. I mean, look at that for a rear end. Put it this way, I wouldn't mind if I saw more of these on the road. We've got the TVR Car Club, which is actually over here which are showcasing restored bodywork and an open interior of a T TVR Tuscan S. So you get to see the bare bones behind the bodywork of how they're originally put together by TVR. Seriously cool and unique looking cars. I mean, you don't really see anything made like how TVR makes cars. It's, you can see this car a mile away and know it's a TVR just because the shape of the bodywork, the headlights are so unique. I mean, look at that for some paintwork though. Catch the shine off of that. We've got an Escort SE here. Obviously been restored by the very nice state of that bodywork. I mean, look at that for an interior. Beautiful. The colouring is really nice as well. Like the colour of those seats is not really something you see nowadays. Although, if you put that in a modern car, people would complain that it looks dated. But on a car like that, absolutely beautiful. We've got a load of Messerschmitts down here. Strange looking cars. Unique, definitely. They remind me a little bit of an even narrower version of a BMW i Setter. Um, some of you will definitely know what that is. Some of you may not, but if you don't, then uh, open your Google search and search in a BMW i Setter and you will understand where that comes from. As far as paint jobs go, I mean, look at this. This is uh, an interesting little effect. Sort of like glitter in the paint. Please do not touch the car, obviously. Goes without saying. Now, this will be a car for some of you. An old Ford Sierra. As you know, some of the parts for these are still used in kit cars nowadays, more specifically our older generation of kit car. Got the old Sierra upright. But, I mean, these are beautiful cars when they're still in one piece. They are rare to see in this sort of condition nowadays, I'll tell you that. Moving along, we've got a white XR3i. Another beautiful, beautiful spec of car. Lovely little paintwork done on these. It's nice to see them. I mean, for someone of my age, it's nice to see what these would have looked like when they come out of the factory. I mean, obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't around when uh, these were released, but it's almost like nostalgia from a generation which I didn't see, because people looking after their cars is exactly what everyone wants to see, especially when it's a car like this. We've got a Sierra RS Cosworth here. I mean, look at the beauty of this. You just don't see cars like this nowadays. You just don't. Look at that engine work. Unsure on the red rocker cover, but we go with it. Little smart roadster. That is not exactly what I was expecting to see here today, but you know. They're an interesting looking car. I'm not overly sure of them. Supposedly they are meant to be quite good to drive though. Now this is something you definitely do not see nowadays. With the door that opens right at the front. We've got a little Trojan here. Now we've got, actually got an old drag racer as seen by that photo down there. I mean, look at that for a car. Beautiful. 
this grey car that you're seeing here is actually a Vauxhall Chevette. Definitely not something you see every day. All rally liveried up. Now for those of you earlier in the video when I mentioned the BMW Isetta and you didn't understand or know what it was, I found one. It's in a bit of a sorry state, but as you can see it is a very different looking car. I think a lot of people of today's generation would struggle to fit in there, but you have to appreciate the car for what it's worth. I mean, look at how bare bones that is on the interior. You've got a little speedo in there, and that is honestly about it. This is definitely not something you see every day. I'm not actually sure if I've seen one of these in real life before. But, oh, Renault Spider, which seems to have a max power sticker right on the top of the windscreen. Here we have a Citroen Mirage Lamborghini Countach. Now let's just run around the other side and get a quick glimpse of the front end of this because I'm very interested to see what this looks like. And I'm also interested to see what engine this has in it because this is definitely not something you see every day. Right now there are some front lights on there. A Citroen CX Special. I have seen enough. I've seen enough. No. Right now, here we have a Mark III, I believe, Toyota Supra, which is um, definitely not your average C, especially in this condition. This is pristine. And the interior is absolutely gorgeous. There's not a mark on it. I believe this is going to be up for auction later in the later part of today, so someone is going to be a new owner of this Mark III Toyota Supra which is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that colour. I've seen a couple in my time. They're usually black from what I see and they're definitely never in this condition. Bigger fan of this shape than I am the Mark IV personally but obviously personal preference and all that. Now I'll come all the way down here moving along the same show stand we do actually have a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. So a slightly newer gen. This has been listed up at 79,995. It's quite a lot of ask, but it is a lot of car. And they do go like absolutely anything. And look at that interior as well. Usually, I probably would have made sense to bring a map with this. But we're gonna explore this together. I mean, all of this makes me feel so old. All of this makes me feel so old. Holy hell. Hillman Imp Rally Car. Now, I suppose, in terms of power to weight, I don't suppose we're much different, a very different style of car. But I God, I remember hearing sounds of these things on TV when I was young. Absolute monsters. Now that's an exhaust setup as well. I, I imagine they don't have to worry too much about IVA noise compliance for that one. Oh, boy, sport. Now I remember seeing one of these, I think on, on the corner of the, uh, the road by where I grew up and uh, we used to watch the guy and his wife get in it every morning, we'd stand around waiting for him to start it. Absolute pornography, such beautiful condition. I bet finding parts for this would be next to impossible. It is spotless. I mean, get yourself a sunbeam nowadays. I wouldn't want to take it outside. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't want to take it outside. A little bit of old school call here today. Um, we were a little bit unsure of what was going to be here, but I think we've... Uh, I think we've got essentially the crossover between the uh, the race retro show and um, the restoration show where everything was chopped and changed around after 
the cancellation of the last show. So um, we've been blessed with some Austin Allegro's. Ah. Is that a Nissan Sunny? Shut the front door. <laughs> it's an automatic Nissan Sunny. It's an automatic. It's car. Oh, wow. It makes me feel so old. It does make me feel so old. Now, the nicety for me is the, uh, the majority of you guys watching these videos will will think this is, uh, you know, an everyday occurrence to see these, so it doesn't make me feel so old. Oh, look, it's a Rover with the bonnet up. Let's move on. Oh, look, there's a Rover with the bonnet up. Oh, look, <laughs> there's a Rover with a bonnet up. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I mean, this goes back to when you'd uh, you'd polish your car with WD-40 in the morning, wouldn't you? Considering this was an Irish-designed car, how much of this was fueled by Guinness? I've seen better mounted handbrake designs. <laughs> you imagine getting out of that with a handbrake up? You'd lose your kneecap. So, this is Club Calibra. Um, what's funny is probably about, coming up to 20 years ago, I, uh, I applied for, to join these, this group and get one of their window stickers. Two days later, someone rear-ended my car and I never got to drive it. Club Calibra, Calibra touring car. Now, you try and tell me that there is not a bone in your body that doesn't get excited by the look of this. How beautiful is that? Good Lord. So I had a uh, two litre, double over cam, 16 valve, it midnight purple, and it was rear-ended by a female drunk driver. And I never got to drive it. I had full leather interior, leather door cards. Uh, the first time I sat in it, I thought I'd get third degree burns. What's the channel? MK What's the channel? MK Sports Cars. MK Sports Cars. Okay, yeah. Tim. Tim, how are you doing? It's nice to see you. Um, we got the option to buy one of these. We were going to trade our, our family Capri for one of these. My dad decided to keep the Capri for some dumb reason. And I was always angry at him because I always wanted one. Absolute gorgeous. Capri or Open Manor? What's your choice? What's your choice? This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but it's not quite the Open Manor GTE. Open Manor GTE is pornography on wheels. Especially when it's in pristine condition. Good Lord. The only thing that gives this car away for its age is the reg. Oh, guys. Now, you've, you've seen Recaro seats before. You're not quite seeing them. <laughs> the bottom half as big as that. That's a, another one for viewers. Do we do seats in that print for the RX-5? I think we should. I think we should. Astra GT red top. Now, Astra GTE, we, we had a conversation. This is, a lot of this was uh, high school chatter about the, uh, the SFI engines in these. Everyone had, I suppose from my age, everyone had pictures on their wall. And I was from the age of where I had all of these on my wall. So, as much as Stoney was cancelled and that's really upsetting, kind of not that upset anymore. Hey guys. 
God, blimey. It makes me feel so old, it really does, but God, I had this on my wall when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, God. Hello. Now, you don't get much more old school cool than this. I mean, it's all the same sort of generation as your Astra GTs and stuff like that. These were all spoken about in hushed tones when I was a boy. I say old, like when I was a boy, like I'm 50 years old. I feel like it, yeah, I'm just not. Renault 5 GT Turbo. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's utterly beautiful. I'm sure this show is literally just a conglomerate of what was on my wall when I was a boy. Now, if you want a cool looking dash, Lewis, stick your head in there. Have a look at that bad boy. His interest lasted about two weeks. What's restricted? Now, this equation I can almost completely agree with. Almost. Almost. The MG X power. Now, I think this was uh, the idea that MG were going to try and break out into the sports car world. Now, I think most of you won't have a clue what the hell this is, and that goes to show that it didn't quite work. But there is no doubt, for me at least, it isn't a cool looking car. <laughs> What do we reckon? Can we fit that engine in an RX5? What's it looking at the floor? looking at the floor. You're not happy, Bunny. How many cylinders is too many cylinders? Trick question. There's never too many cylinders. That is just un. It's a scary thought process to think that things like this will never be made again. With ULES compliance, Euro 6 emission laws and, and how life's going, none of, things, none of these things will ever be made again. Except for maybe in someone else's shed. And it just feels sad. Like A lot of this is just end of life stuff. And it breaks my heart. But the fun fact about the TR7 was that uh, the back end was essentially cut off during the design phase because they ran out of money. It was meant to be buttresses towards the back end of the car. It was made so terribly and cheaply that nearly 95% of them all rotted away within the first year of use. Uh, but yeah, if you had to change a headlight on that, right, and you left it in your boot, Let's do this, right, we're going to walk from the front of the car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve steps to get into the boot of the car where you left your bowl. Do you know what's funny about the bonnet of that? I really liked him as a kid. Manual Corvette Stingray Cabriolet. But I think that's the, one of the nicest sentences I've ever said in my life. Manual Corvette Stingray Cabriolet. How amazing is that? Back when fuel economy was a myth. The colour on it is gorgeous. Have a look at that, it's like a green bronze. Oh, that's stunning. Red leather interior? Oh, that's cool, huh? What's nice is you've got everybody working on their cars as well here. You've got uh, a few different stages. We're going to go and have a look in a moment. There's some uh, college students over the way. They're rebuilding some cars there too. Our boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. You 
can't go wrong with an Escort. And what's funny with an older Escort is it doesn't matter what the paintwork condition is, it's still going to look gorgeous. There's no two ways about it. Like, oh, Rottle Bodies 2. You imagine the noise out of that at full chat. How smart is that? Being supercharged is the only way forward. You've also got to stick a giant blower on that. Is that nitrous? Shut the front door. Is that nitrous? Who's got the death wish to drive this? That crazy man there. The door looks like an actual man. <laughs> that. Um, that's the bit I find hilarious in all this. The blower, awesome. That's the bit I find mental. That helps what? it along as well. It's a little 60 shot, isn't it? What's it running? The, the horsepower wise. Without the blower, I haven't dynoed it without, right. with the blower and the gas, but without the blower and the gas, it is making 220 with 158 foot pounds, uh, 258 foot pounds at all. Yeah, now we've got the blower on there and the little 60 shot of gas. I would like to think we're creeping up to the 300 mark, to be honest. But. Amazing. Now, Rego aside, is that road legal? Yes. I use it on the street all the time. I bet you scared the bejesus out of folk in this, didn't you? But it's really, really drivable. Is it really? Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. Is it? Wow. Yeah. I bet that sounds incredible because though. Because it's a four-barrel car. Yeah. If you're driving sensible, you're only using two of them. Sure, sure. And if you're not booting it, you've not got all the supercharger. Right. Boost. Yeah. So it, it kind of makes it, it quite okay. pleasant. If you own it, it goes. It really goes. I mean, the fuel cell you've it got. Light the tyres up in sort of third gear if you if you want it to. What's it weigh? Next to nothing. A lot of people said that you know UK cars were quite boring and bland. I don't know. Maybe it's because we've grown up with them, but I still think that's a beautiful looking car. It doesn't have the curves of you know Italian cars, but I still think they were good looking. Ford console. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Now that is an interior. Have a look at that. It's like a velvet floor. Or you can have checker plate floor. Stop what you're doing. Ignore everything else. There's a reason this is surrounded by folk. How cool is that? Right. Sean and I had a conversation yesterday about this, like the best colour combination for the Talbot Sunbeam. I'm with the blue, Sean is with the black and silver. I want to know what people think about this because uh, I think the blue and silver is such a cool look but Sean's very stuck in his ways and think they should only be in the black and silver, what do you reckon? Right, and that marks just about it for the NEC Practical Classics and Restoration Show. Thanks to everyone that uh, I met today coming down to the show and having a chat about the cars. Um, there was quite a variety of different things there really. Uh, not exactly what I expected in terms of the cars, but um, some cars which were definitely classics, some which are definitely not. I mean, to be fair, they're bordering 20 years old, but some like 06 plate BMWs wouldn't really regard as a classic, but nonetheless, great little show. Thanks to everyone that came down and um, 
If you want to come and have a test drive in the RX-5, then make sure to hook up Andy or Neil uh, on a phone call or an email and then come down to the factory and go out in the RX-5 uh, 250. Great little car. I haven't been out on it since it's been dynoed, but pre-dyno, just as a little test drive to make sure the engine was all fine, it had some serious power and that was before it had been mapped. So that's it for this video. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you next week.